Okay, Doug, the next topic in trig is going to be a new function called tangent, and we're going to learn how to solve some super basic trig equations. So remember, the most important thing that you can possibly know in all of trig is that everything's defined from the unit circle. So if I go ahead and I put up a circle here, then we know that our coordinates x and y aren't really x and y anymore, but if you draw an angle directly from the center here, call it theta, then we have a couple of facts. One is that x is going to be called cosine of theta, and that y is going to be called sine of theta. And we saw from our last video that we can say a bunch of things about sine and cosine. For example, that sine and cosine have to be between negative 1 and 1. That sine squared plus cosine squared has to be 1. And we just saw that um, if you have a triangle that has the same angle there, if that's also theta, and I label the triangle A, B, and C, we saw that cosine of theta is just the ratio of side A to side C, and that sine of theta is just the ratio of side B to side C. We're going to fill the rest of um, probably what you heard in high school in today um, by talking about a totally new function. And so just remember, x equals cosine theta, y equals sine theta, and today we're going to define um, a new function tan theta. It's really easy. It's just the ratio of sine of theta to cosine of theta. And you can sort of think of that as y over x. So if you're on a circle and you draw your axes here and you have your angle theta, then whatever these coordinates are, x, y, the ratio of y to x, height to base, is going to give you this new function, tangent of theta. So let's talk about a bunch of properties of tangent, um, some things that can go wrong. One thing you should notice is that tangent is a fraction. And so tangent of theta is undefined when x equals 0 or when cosine of theta equals 0 or what values of theta make us have x equals 0? Well, x is 0 up top and down below, and that's pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Okay? So this is really important. Tangent is not defined at all when x is 0 or cosine theta is 0. So we had started talking about what happened if your unit circle, and we talked about cosine and sine. in all of the four quadrants. Remember, this is quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. And sine and cosine have certain values in the quadrants. Well, now we're going to take tangent as another angle. I'm going to go ahead and fill that in here. And in the first quadrant, both x and y are positive. And since cosine is x, cosine is positive. Since sine is y, sine is positive. And remember, tangent is sine over cosine. So positive over positive is positive. Here in quadrant 2, our x values have become negative. So cosine is now negative. Sine is still positive, And negative over positive is negative. How about down here in quadrant 3? Well, now everything is negative. That makes cosine negative. That makes sine negative, but since tangent is the ratio of cosine to sine, what we're going to have is we're going to have a positive here. And then in quadrant 4, the x values have become positive again. So cosine has become positive, 
sine is still negative, and tangent is now negative. So you can see what happens is um, in three of the quadrants, quadrant 2, 3, and 4, only one is positive at a time. Sine, tangent, cosine, and here everything is positive. That leads us to a mnemonic that students like to use, A, S, T, C, right? What does A, S, T, C stand for? It stands for going, starting with quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4, all, sine, tangent, cosine. But what, is, what students like to use to remember, to how do you remember A, S, T, C? One way is that all students take calculus. And that tells you which quadrant has which positive. Quadrant 1 is everything, quadrant 2 is sine, quadrant 3 is tangent, and 4 is cosine. So we have a new function tangent, we have our old function sine and cosine, and as group work we calculated a whole bunch of values for sine and cosine. So if I go ahead and put some angles up, and make a little table. Up here at the top, we're going to have 0 pi over 6. Pi over 4. Pi over 3 and pi over 2. On the left, I'm going to fill in sine, cosine, and then I'm going to fill in tangent. Right? We know that tangent is sine divided by cosine. So the values we saw were 0 and 1, 1 half, radical 3 over 2, both of these were radical 2 over 2. This is radical 3 over 2. That's a half. And this is now 1, and that's now 0. And remember, tangent is sine over cosine. And so if we just divide down the table, we'll get the values for tangent. So Tangent of 0 is going to give us 0 divided by 1, which is 0. Now, whenever both of them are over 2, the halves cancel. And so sine of pi over 6 divided by cosine of pi over 6 is 1 over radical 3, which simplifies to radical 3 over 3. Sine and cosine are the same at pi over 4, so when we divide, we get 1. Here, we just get radical 3. And then here we get undefined. So here are a couple of the most basic values for sine, cosine, and tangent. It's a reasonably useful table to know. Um, these values will come in handy because we'll be using them a lot since they're computable. Um, so that's how we fill in that table for tangent. So let's look at a couple of really, really super basic equations. What if I wanted you to solve sine theta equals one half? How would you go about that? Well, in the back of your head, what you should be thinking is that sine is the same as y. So what I would be doing is I would be replacing y with one half. And then I would draw my unit circle and I'm, I would graph the line y equals one half. And I would try to draw little angles out to where we're going to go on the circle. Here's one of them. And remember, you always have to start in the positive x direction. So here's the other. How big are those angles? How can we figure this out? Well, 
One is that we can go to our table and we can find the first one in the first quadrant. Remember, every single value across the top here is in the first quadrant. So since one of our intersections is in the first quadrant, we can see that sine is one half, where? Right here at pi over six. So this angle, pi over six, works for us. The question is how to figure out the other angle. Since y equals one half and the x-axis are parallel, we can actually say a lot of things. This angle here that I just highlighted, here let me go ahead and fill it in, this angle is the same as this angle. That means that the little missing bit is also pi over 6. If we remember exactly one more piece of information, we can finish this. The big angle, halfway, is pi. And so what we have is that this angle is all of pi missing pi over 6. How do we write that? We would write that as 5 pi over 6, which is the same as pi minus pi over 6. Let's try another one. Let's try cosine of theta equals radical 3 over 2. Remember, in the back of your brain, you should be thinking that cosine is x, and so write x equals radical 3 over 2. Draw your circle. Graph x equals radical 3 over 2, and draw lines going to both of the intersecting points. Now, my circle's a little oblate, so it doesn't look like it, but those two angles are going to be identical. So let's go back to our table. When is cosine equal to radical 3 over 2? Look at that. Also pi over 6. So this angle here is pi over 6. This angle since it's below the axis, well, it has to go all the way around to here. So it's almost all of 2 pi missing the pi over 6. That's 11 pi over 6. Let's do one more. When is sine squared of theta equal to a quarter? Well, we remember a couple of things. One is that sine is going to be our y value, and that if y squared equals a, then y equals plus or minus radical a. So when we replace sine with y, we get y squared equals 1 quarter. So y has to equal plus or minus 1 half, which is the square root of a quarter. Let's draw our circle. So now we graph y equals positive 1 half. y equals positive 1 half and y equals negative one-half. And so now we have a lot of angles to deal with. But what's important is all four of these angles are the same. So we know that the angle each of these makes is going to be pi over six. So all we have to do is figure out how to write all of the angles so the first one is obviously pi over 6. And this one here, remember we did this before, over here, it was 5 pi over 6 because it was pi minus pi over 6. But 
how about this one? Well, that goes all the way to pi plus another pi over 6. Pi plus pi over 6 is 7 pi over 6. And then lastly, we have to worry about exactly one more. This one, which we saw from here, was 11 pi over 6. It's almost all the way to 2 pi, and then we have to take off the pi over 6 that we never go. That's 11 pi over 6. And so there are all of my possible values so that sine squared is a quarter. All right, that's it for the lesson. I'm going to go ahead and stop, and I'll see you in class. Make sure you do the homework.